What's up, everybody? Hey. Welcome to another episode of Pitch It. What's up? I'm Daniel. I'm Liam. And today, this month, we are talking about the Kim Possible movie. It started off as a joke, but the thing is, like, I actually really loved watching Kim Possible as a kid. It was, like, yes. my favorite cartoon show. This was festering in my mind for about a year. And then we saw the trailer for the shitty Disney... They just made it into a shitty Disney Channel, yes. like, remake. Like, of all the things that deserve, like, a Netflix adaptation, like, this would be one of them. <laughs> We were pitching a legit, like, big budget, $150 million... Kim Possible. Kim Possible movie. Yes, respectable. Um, yes, because if Disney can spend, you know, however much fucking money on... on a wrinkle in time. Or on the fucking Nutcracker, you can, make a, <laughs> you can make a fucking Kim Possible movie. Exactly. Let's start out with director. Who are we getting to direct this? So, I was thinking about this for a while. If you take it too seriously, this risks becoming, like... Just another YA franchise. And that's not what I want this... Oh, has God, to be, no. It has to be silly. Jennifer Lawrence as Kim Possible. So, oh, God. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. So, I wanted to pick somebody who, number one, knows how to write interesting genre stuff, but also can do stuff that's kind of creative and funny and clever. So, I went with Drew Goddard as a writer-director. Okay. He did Cat in the Woods. He did Bad Times at the El Royale, which is great. He got nominated for an Oscar for writing The Martian. He's written for Buffy. He created Daredevil, the series, and directed a couple episodes of that. You know, it's not like you just take an indie filmmaker and they make a shitty blockbuster. It's not like a Josh Trank, Colin Trevorrow situation. This guy's already done blockbuster action sort of stuff. So I think he, he would be my choice. I think anybody can, for the most part, can do, like, an action plot. The thing about Kim Possible that works, too, is that she is a teenager. And yeah. you needed somebody who could, like, show that character well. And so my mind went to Kelly Freeman Craig, who did The Age okay. of Seventeen. I've, I've actually been waiting for her to do something else. Exactly. I think Drew Goddard might be good just like as an overall guy. I don't know if Drew Goddard can capture what it's like to be a teenager. As well, well, he did. Th that's why he, he wrote Buffy. He, or he wrote parts of that. Granted, it was season seven, but he's written... Yeah. But he's, he, he wrote a few of my favorite episodes. I mean, would you be so, all right with Drew Goddard writing for Kelly Freeman Craig like he did The Martian? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, okay, I'll say that. Because he... Because he's a hands-on producer, too. Right. Because so he, he, he's a yeah, team. And, he, and he's, written, he's written, you know, uh, stuff for, like, he wrote his, all the screenplays. So, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll settle. Let's go with that. Yeah, and, you know, maybe he can bring him in to direct in, like, the tracking shot. There's a lot of characters in this. We're just going to go one by one for the main four, Kim, Ron, Draken, and Shigo. And then the rest of them, we're going to speed round it. So, Kim. Weirdly, this is the one I'm least attached to, because it's like... I feel like a lot of the personality is going to come from the script. You need, like, a redhead actress that's young and, like, attractive. The one that, I think she's a little bit too old, would be Molly Quinn. Who? Castle's daughter. Who? I really like Sophie Turner. Um, mm. But I'm, uh, I think that she would, I think she does have, like, a lot of personality. Um, okay. And it's like, oh, they're not making any more X-Men movies. She, this is her own thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, she can have her own franchise. But I think that, and we talked about this, I think I'm landing on, I, it's like, especially if it is like a Kelly Fremont Craig, Kelly Fremont Craig, I, I think I'm going to land on Sir Ronan. And not just because I'm in love with her, although that is part of it. I don't see this as Lady Bird 2.0. It's a different character. But you need somebody who's like kind of, you, you can believe is sort of this innovative person, but who's also going through like teenager shit. The reason I ultimately didn't land on Sir Ronan is because I was planning a trilogy, and I'm thinking what happens in like a bunch of years when Sir Ronan grows up. I actually went with Sophia Lillis from It. Okay, well that's because all of my castings are like older. I think it's important that we actually get a teenager because we do actually have really good teenage actors, and I think Sophia Lillis was the standout of It. How old I will is say Sophia that. Lillis? She's seventeen. I think with Sophia Lillis, she can land the more badass tones. She can also be extremely vulnerable. I think she has more range, to be honest, than Sophie Turner does. And maybe that's because I've only seen like the first two seasons of Game of Thrones and the X-Men movies, where she just, honestly to me, just does nothing. I okay, really think that's, she's that's got like script. this blank that's the stare. Script, if you have a great script, I'm I'm sticking to Sophie Turner. I don't no, care. I can't. I can't give up. I can't give this up for. I can't give up. On us, even if the skies, you know. Okay, we're not gonna get anywhere arguing about this. Let's settle on Sir Ronan. Okay, sure. Let's settle Whatever. on Sir Ronan so we can move on. Okay, 
Because so, do, do as have, much as I want to have <laughs> an actual teenager play. We don't a need teenager. an extra. I don't She's like a teenagers. great actress. I don't like she teenagers. can do this I shit. I like Sophia Lewis. Oh my uh, god. Well, Saoirse uh, Ronan has way too many movies. Give one to the girl from it. It's fine. I Sophie like... Turner had X Men. Fuck her. <laughs> They're not making any more of those. I need your help for Ron. Okay, so well, I went for the Ron to star opposite. I'm not casting a 17 year old. I'm not. I'm, I've got. If you say Jonah Jonas, I'm gonna punch you in the throat. I'm not casting Jonah Jonas. I fuck Joe Jonas. Did uh, you fuck Joe Jonas? So I'm casting somebody opposite. Bobby. Sir, <laughs> I'm <laughs> casting somebody opposite uh, Sir Ronan or Sophie Turner. So I went with, and maybe this is a cliche, but you need like schlubby kind of like no fucking guy, blonde guy. I went with Lucas Hedges. I just like the, as like, the, as like the schlubby like I can I can see Lucas Hedges sitting alone in a room talking to a naked mole rat. I can work with that because like I'm imagining Lucas Hedges in something like mid nineties versus I need Boy Le- Erased versus he's got range. That's also for, the, for the, the sake of his career, Lucas Hedges needs to fucking lighten up a little bit. He does. Like he, I mean, God, Lucas Hedges is one indie movie away from a suicide pact. But yeah, well, he just fucking he's playing Shia LaBeouf now. He needs like I think he, he could be a funny guy. This one is gonna be Doctor Dracken. I have a few options. I so my go. I ultimately landed on one that I like. Okay, Benedict Cumberbatch. Okay, this is my age appropriate brain, so I don't know how this is gonna work out. Apparently, in the show, and I forgot about this, Doctor Dracken and Kim's dad were like in school together, so they have to be around the same age. So like, arguably in their forties, so not somebody like. I think we joked Christoph Waltz at one point. Yeah. But, like, Christoph Waltz is, like, too old for it, I think. I didn't remember that backstory. You don't have to include every element from the show. I know, but, but I think Cumberbatch, one, has the face for it. I can work Two, with he has experience with the makeup. Three, he can do literally anything. Yeah. And, so, and he also, do, like, doesn't give a fuck in a lot he of He does things. it. I mean, if this is the guy who was in Zoolander 2. Yeah. So we're well, fine. He was also the Grinch. So clearly he likes money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We'll talk about it later when we get to more of the character stuff, but I imagine, like, um, Dr. Dracken in this movie to be very much, like, he's essentially, like, Elon Musk. He's just, like, this rich guy who just does weird shit, and he kind of, like, instead of investing in, like, weird Elon Musk stuff, he invents in, like, weird evil inventions. So he's kind of just, like, this weirdo guy, like, tech billionaire sort of dude. So I, I went with... Cumberbatch would work for that, but I went with Steve Buscemi. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Just because, can't you imagine Steve Buscemi in that makeup, uh, doing, like, fucking Dr. Draken stuff? Wouldn't that be hilarious? My brain's trying to get past the eyes. Like, it just... That would be great, though. Steve Buscemi can do something like Con Air, when it's, like, a ridiculous movie, but he's, like, somehow taking it seriously, even though it's such a weird character. I'm, 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 I'm almost with you. Uh, what about the voice? Like, can we... Because every time Steve Buscemi opens his mouth in a movie, it's Steve Buscemi, and you got to get past that. Whereas Cumberbatch can change his voice. Yeah, but it's like, I don't know. And which one's going to sell the movie? Here's the thing. Like, I was planning to bank the entire movie around Cumberbatch. Like, oh. This would get sold because of Cumberbatch. Okay. So it's you conceded Sir Sharon, or Sir yeah. Sharon and Lucas Hedges. If we're conce- keeping Sir Sharon and Lucas Hedges in the spirit of being kind, in, I will give in you... In the spirit of trying I to will, get a movie made. I will give you Cumberbatch. Okay. All right, the next one I'm not budging on. Oh, so fuck. Chigo has to be the best character in the movie. Chigo has to be uh-huh. the actually, like, malevolent force, because Dr. Dra- Dracken's just there doing weird just stuff. Just dipshit, You yeah. need the actual, like, inverse of Kim to okay. be an int- This has to be, like, a Heath Ledger Joker-level performance. Oh, shit. So you need, like, a really great actress... Who can play the humor into it? Who can be that, that sort of like blank face, like okay. give that comedy delivery, but can also play like off of the dark side of it? Yeah. So I went with Aubrey Plaza. I could see Aubrey Plaza in that costume. I can see Aubrey Plaza playing off of um, uh, uh, Saoirse Ronan. I think that they're on screen chemistry great. I can I just and I can just see like you know Cumberbatch whoever like do, jumping around like having these evil plans, and she goes just sitting there, and that's like the actual. Like force behind this, I don't see Aubrey Plaza as a fighter. I don't see her doing action. I think she can do action. She did it on Legion. You know, now that you were mentioning it, so I originally had a pick which was like more age appropriate. But if we're going off the wall, well, she uh, was supposed to be older. Shigo is supposed to be older, and I had one that was older, but she was okay. like in her twenties. I'm thinking Sylvia Hex from Blade Runner twenty four nine. 
I think she, I could see her in that costume. I, don't see, I just don't she see her doing fights. the comedy. I, just see, I can see her doing... Well, you said it yourself. She's a malevolent force. But she also has to have the comedy. This is still a movie for, like, fucking, like, I know, minutes. but I think she has the possibility to do comedy, whereas I don't think Aubrey Plaza can do action. Isn't Aubrey Plaza, like, a really tiny? I don't know. And, like, Saoirse... I think Saoirse so Ronan's taller than... It's the magic of movies! I don't know, man. I really don't see them, like... Doing these crazy fights, whereas like Sylvia Hex, if you've seen the well, end of Blade Runner twenty forty nine, I don't know how action heavy you're expecting this movie to be. I mean, it's I don't an have action. Well, you don't have. The thing is, I don't have Shigo in every action sequence. Obviously, but you gotta have I, the I King Shigo. I would rather do this. Yeah, but I would rather have the the comedy background of Aubrey Plaza. I think Aubrey Plaza would be. I don't. I think she's the better actress choice. I think she's. She yeah, does. but Shigo is only funny because in the first time that you see her, she's so damn serious. So I think that's something where a more dramatic actress would just, lean into it hard, and then when it's, like, the writing would help serve the comedy. You know what I mean? I don't see Aubrey Plaza. I don't see that. Sylvia Hex. I know I'm probably going to lose this, but I'm going to leave this one to the audience. So uh, let me know in the comments below. <laughs> I'm officially putting my bid on Sylvia Hex from Blade Runner 2049. I, no. And well, I'm putting... Liam can put yours for Aubrey Plaza, and y'all let us know in the comments. Who I can would see make it on Doctor Dragon, but I'm not. This is like the one casting. Uh, I'm sick I of it. I can't. Everything else, I'm like because I thought about it for like half a second, and I was like, I just don't like the presence. Anyway, who are we doing next? Now we're doing a speed round, and we're just gonna go down our list of other external characters that we've got. I've got Wade uh, played. Man, I had this age appropriate too. Uh, the new kid from Halloween. The I little kid, I haven't seen Halloween. The little black kid in Halloween who stole the movie during uh, the babysitter scene. His name is Jabrail Natambu. Yeah, the kid's like fucking nine years old and Wade is ten, so it was perfect. Kim's mom, I have Judy Greer. Kim's dad, I have James Marsden. Monique, her best friend, I've got Amanda Stenberg. Bonnie is played by Isabella Moner. Monkey Fist, I have Toby Kebbell. Duff Killigan, I've got Brendan Gleeson. And I had spots for Team Go, but I'm not sure how... Go oh, ahead, I have Team Go on mine. You have Team Go? Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. All right, Okay. Cool. What do you got? Okay, so starting with Wade, again, it's just looking... Just to... speed run it. Okay, so I went with Abraham Ataha from uh, Beast of No Nation. He has a very small oh, role in Spider-Man yeah, Homecoming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Kim's parents, I have Aiden Gillen from Game of Thrones and Sarah Michelle Gellar. Bonnie, I had, I, I just, I, this one was just bullshit. I had uh, uh, Natalie Dyer from Stranger Things, because I think it'd be fun Give to hear. Uh, uh, Lord Monkey Fist, I went easy. I went Andy Serkis. Duff Killigan, I went Tom Wilkinson, because it would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Wilkinson. <laughs> okay, what's the teacher's name? I have no idea. The teacher, I have Shea Wiggum. <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> just I think I know who you're talking about. You're talking about the coach? Is yeah, there the a coach in the show? It's whoever the teacher is. I, I, I'm okay. sorry. I'm, I'm sorry Kim Wiggum. Possible stands. Oh, God. We're going to get attacked by Kim Possible Twitter. Um, Monkey Fist is the villain in the second movie. And then the yes. third movie, I for I had Senior Senior and Junior Junior. I was thinking villains. about that. Who do you got? So I for Senior Senior, I have Wagner or Mora, who plays Pablo Ooh. Escobar on Narcos. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, Pablo Escobar on Narcos. Uh, and then uh, the, as Junior Junior, I had Elijah Rodriguez, who has barely been in anything. But he was in Sicario 2, and I thought it was good. Wait, do you have Team Go? Uh, I had... For we go, I had Cody and Dylan Sprouse. Those are the only twins I knew. I didn't. I didn't cast the the twins as Higo, and I think this is actually be fun. And I wouldn't int introduce Team Go until the sequel. But as Higo, I had Jamie Dornan. I'm down. Um, and then as Nigo, as just like this self obsessed asshole, I had uh, Jesse Plemons. I think that would be fun. Again, I'm down. Um, are you good with my twins? I have no idea who those people are. Who are they? Zach and Cody. Oh, from the Disney oh okay, sorry. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah we're, I think we're good. And then I have a few other just like random side characters. So uh, I have okay. Glenn Howerton is the pet shop owner. Where Oh, we were both in agreement that Rufus is CGI voiced by Nancy Cartwright, who did it in the cartoon, right? I don't want to see a CGI thing. Like, that's going to look bad. That's going to look shitty no matter how, how you... You got to have Rufus, though. I, Rufus is in he, it. People would go ballistic but if I, you I, didn't put Rufus. I, I, I have... Whatever they do with Rufus, I have them doing it a tongue-in-cheek. I think that's just one thing you can't translate from the cartoon. I don't want to see... This isn't fucking, like, G-Force. Like, Ron works at Bueno Naco. Or Bueno, bueno Nacho. Nacho. Yeah. Um, so who do you and so manager? Aaron Taylor Johnson is doing some weird shit. He is doing some weird like, shit. Like, if you have not seen Outlaw King on Netflix, he's, like, going fucking Look, nuts. there's a scene in Nocturnal Animals where, where he, he fucking wipes his own ass. <laughs> he wipes his own ass with his hand. 
Yeah. I have Sarah Michelle Geller, who's playing Kim's mom, is running for like some sort of office. Maybe it's like a local thing. And the guy she's running against, Tim Meadows, who also owns a dojo. And whenever he's like on like on TV, he just keeps talking about his dojo instead of like talking about any public issues. I just imagine Tim Meadows in like this weird uh, Goodfellas style commercial where he's like. <laughs> I'm um, slashing prices. Hey! Yeah, <laughs> like, breaks through like a twenty five ninety nine to a twenty ninety nine. Yes, symbol. to limit this down, I disagree with you about Aiden Gillen. I think he looks too much like a smarmy dick, whereas James Marsden looks like Kim's actual dad, and I okay, think he okay. could sell that. Shit. Anything is possible for a pot. I could see that. You know, I could see James Marsden because you need to have somebody James say Marsden. that with like a smile, but be sincere. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you James Marsden. I like James Marsden. I like Sarah Michelle Gellar a little bit better than uh, Judy Greer. I'm the only one with Monique in there. I think you need it just because if you're going to have a scene with Bonnie, yeah. you need to have somebody. Do you, are you okay on, with uh, Stranger Things Girl as I don't Bonnie? know the Stranger Things Girl, but I yeah. think that'd probably be better. How, how old is she? She's like 20. Yeah, it works. Oh, the one I'm going to fight with you on. Toby Kebbell is Monkey Fist. Yeah, that's fine. Any yeah. circus was just like the first thing that came up I, with. No, if you look at Toby Kebbell and you look at the picture yeah. of Monkey Fist, okay. perfect. The one thing I will say, though, is Brendan Gleeson looks better as Duff Cogan than Tom Wilkinson. I'll, Tom I'll Wilkinson's get... too old. I, I, again, I was thinking of a Scottish guy, and Brendan Gleeson plays a lot of Scottish guys. I don't have Duff Cogan as a big role. I feel that he's like a side villain. That's exactly what I have him as, but you need somebody that can kick ass. Yeah, that's and, fine. Like, uh, okay. He scared the shit out of me in Paddington, too. Whew! Done with casting, and we are 33 minutes into the recording. Jesus fucking Christ. This is going to be a two-part. This is the only one I'm passionate about. Christ. The Batman one, I was just like, eh. Yeah, this one's going to be fun. Okay. Story. I think the thing with Kim, they describe her in the show as, like, she's popular. She's on the cheerleading squad. She's a straight-A student, and she's a spy. I'm like, okay, cool. Kim can be good at everything, but the struggle is doing it all at the same time. So I think that's going to be her big, like, character arc. Okay. How to... How, how to handle your life when you're a perfectionist. I think we can incorporate that into my idea. Yes. So my, the main villain plot is Dr. Draken is, because he's a weirdo tech guy who invests in weird stuff, he is building a, an amusement park that is going to be the center of his like world domination. I'm thinking because in the movie, the one movie where they go on like the ride when he explains all of his okay. evil plans and Ron and Rufus are sitting there and Ron's like, oh, that was really like fucked up. And Rufus is like, rrr, rrr, and he's like, oh yeah, you're right, the music was good. I'm thinking of something that... So it's like, like the killing joke? <laughs> sort of. But he's, he's, <laughs> oh op he's opening this weird thing, and that's... the killing joke. And the thing is, like, he's clearly, like, a bad dude, and everybody kind of know, knows it, but we all just kind of accept that, you know... So wait, is Dr. Draken, like, dressed as Dr. Draken, or is he trying to scam yes. people? No, he's like, he's... this is He views himself as, like, Willy Wonka here. Kim is assuming that all these other, like dicks in the movie, like Shea Widow, who plays the teacher, Glenn Howerton, who's the pet shop owner, Tim Meadows is the guy that runs the dojo, all these other guys, maybe the bully. She's assuming that they're all in on it, and he, she's trying to, like, stop what? this sort of conspiracy. And then the message in the movie is, no, those guys are just all, like, sort of assholes. And she's never going to be able to stop everybody. She's also learning how to be a good spy, too, so she's over-eager and trying to complicate things way more than it actually is. That, but it's also, like, at the end of the day, there's, like, not everything is connected, and, it, like, there's some problems that are just hard to fix. And I'm going to tie that into Shigo's backstory with being part of Team Go, that that was kind of, yeah. like, what turned her is that, like, uh, people are just assholes. After Draken and Shigo get away, I don't think Draken gets put in jail. The second movie starts with Shigo doing a heist of some sort to try to get, like, something for, like, a doomsday weapon, and Team Go shows up and stops her. So Draken breaks Monkey Fist and Duff Killian out of jail to serve as a distraction for Team Go and Kim. I think Draken's trying to build, like, a doomsday weapon to take over, you know, the city or what have you, and he leaves Shigo out to dry. So Shigo snaps, and since she has the malevolence and the intelligence to take over, she's the villain in the third one. And so she takes over all the inventions makes like a rope makes like an army does this doomsday weapon kicks draken out to the curb and so draken is forced because you know he was just gonna control the world shigo legitimately might destroy it i have draken sort of doing stuff in the background in the second movie that's exactly what i have and then and bringing in monkey fist and so what maybe duff kilgan in a bigger role and then the third one i have senior senior and junior junior okay. with shigo shigo being the main Whoa. villain okay so do we run the risk of making this too complicated over three movies no I think you just need more villains to just 
diversified without being too complicated. I think Senior Senior is getting a little bit there. Cause the because I, I don't have, have Duck Kill Again and Monkey Fist in three. They the, they, no, they, no, no, no. They're not going to be in three. For the emotional through line of Shigo, like, going rogue and going ballistic and being hurt by, like, emotional trauma... I see, but I, I see... It works junior, better, I see but. Junior Junior and Senior Senior sort of being the open faces in 3, but they're just Shigo's underlings. It's like, because Shigo isn't having that visibility that the other villains do. She's not like, I'm Dr. Draken, and I'm, like, making, like, weird inventions and stuff. She's sort of the behind-the-scenes force. She, so she has, like... She has to have an army. So Junior Junior and Senior Senior would be the ones that sort of put that together. You know what I think actually might work is if... I love uh, getting so heat about fucking impossible. <laughs> senior Senior is running for state senator, right? His opponent is Kim's mom. Anything he can do to destabilize the Dragon Company benefits him in the state senator position because it'll stabilize Kim's family. Okay. I think that'll yeah, work. that works. Cool. All right. Okay. That out. All right. The only issues I've got, it's a Kim Possible movie. What are we doing with Kim? So I have her graduating high school at the end of the second movie, or in like the middle of the second movie. Second movie can be called Kim Possible Graduation. And maybe the third movie can take place over... Okay, so this is an election thing. It can take place like at the beginning of college. Maybe she's Moving an intern for her mom or something. Maybe Kim is an intern at like, uh, like a police lab? Like... She's going into criminal justice, right? Because she's a spy. Do we, do we have a, a cop? How about Aiden Gillen? He, he needs work. You know what? Fuck it. Let's do Kate Aiden Gillen as like her mentor. Yes. Cool. And he doesn't. He doesn't show up till number two. No, he doesn't show up till like. Well, yeah, he shows up at like a career fair. She's so focused on finishing everything. She's so focused on like graduating high school and stopping Draken and but and then things just sort of keep popping up and she's like and she can't handle everything all right. at once and so she needs to learn. I don't know how to ask for help. Uh, yeah, and which ties into the Team Go thing. I guess. And then, uh, so what are we doing with just her as, like, a person? She's on the cheerleading squad, and yeah. she wants to win state, too, and she's uh, letting down her friends. To be honest, I know fans are going to kill me for this. I don't want Ron and Kim to get together in this trilogy. I have their them together in the first movie, at least. You have them dating in the first one? So, I have the first movie, there's a scene where... Ron ha is trying to ask out Kim, and she he takes her on a date to Bueno Nacho, oh, and but they don't. She doesn't realize until they get there that he works there. And then you have Aaron Taylor Johnson like fucking like he's behind the counter and he's doing like bug eyes and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Ron starts dating like Bonnie in the second one or something. Dude, people would <laughs> Kim Possible I know. Twitter is going is, insane is, right is now. Is Kim Possible Twitter a fucking thing? I don't know. We might find it after this. Okay, video you need to like out. include as much as we, about what we say in this video as possible because I, I want to see how Jesus Kim has trouble completing things because she has too much on her plate. Ron, Ron has, has problems completing things the because he's a fuck up. He's trying to pitch a food idea to Bueno Nacho. Yeah. At the end of the trilogy, we'll give Ron like his own Maybe. like food truck or something, yeah. and that'll show him yeah. like okay. stability and work. And he's not a big college kid or something. I that might work. Yeah. All right. Do you want to talk about some action sequences? I didn't even think about action sequences. Opening action sequence, brief thing that introduces Kim. She's our superhero. Does whatever, and then we lead into her. I have to get up for high school the next morning, and it, fuck it, Mr. Brightside's playing. I don't give a shit. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a Weezer cover of Mr. Brightside. <laughs> She's foiling like a bank bank robbery or something. Yes, I, yes. I don't have a, like a really solid idea. How do you that. want for stylistic? Do you want it to be kind of like a the DCEU would do the opening action scene, which is like. Self serious and whatnot, and then the twist is bam, it's Kim Possible. It's a, it's a teenage girl, yeah. It's yeah, it might be something cool if we like incorporate like more silhouettes, more like noir style yeah. shots, like, like a, a Sin City sort of thing. Yeah, okay. So the second action sequence, and this takes place maybe 20 25 minutes. This is while she is on the date with Ron, like. They're, they're sitting there, they're eating their their burritos or whatever, and she sees, like, across the street, there's, like, somebody's getting robbed or getting carjacked or something. She's like, I'll go to the bathroom real fast. And she's running off to, like, I have to, I'm trying to not screw up this date. And Ron's like, oh, shit, am I, is this girl leaving me? And Aaron Taylor Johnson's there being weird. And Ron, and she has to, like, go across the street and try to, like, stop this and come you know, back. I can see this as kind of like a 
M. Knight uses this technique in Glass where he's shooting the foreground and the back action's happening in the background, so it could be used as like a comedy scene. Yeah. But, like Aaron Taylor Johnson's chewing Ron out and then she's fighting. But it's also like, like basic setup that like, you know, yeah. This yeah. is these are this this is she's trying to balance stuff. Exactly. And so uh, I have another the next big action sequence would be in the middle of the movie. So this is I actually think might be kind of fun. So Rackin is having a meeting with people who are gonna invest in his amusement park. And, it, okay. um, and it's set up that she thinks it's going to be like Tim Meadows, Glenn Howerton, Errol Taylor Johnson, those people. And it's just yeah. like a bunch of white dudes. But the big thing, she's like, it's like a super secret location. Like, where are they going to be? And it's just in like an Ikea. Literally every time I go to Ikea, I think that they need to shoot like an action sequence in an Ikea. That would be so much fun. People like jumping around and stuff. Okay. And it's and so what I have is Ron is going there and he's posing as an investor. So he has to go undercover. And the, the thing is, like, Ron has to use a radio because he's getting instructions from Kim. But he's like, the radio is still getting the signals from work with Aaron Taylor Johnson's. Like, we need three orders of, like, bean burritos and stuff. You but, are single handedly giving Aaron Taylor Johnson way more work than anyone is in the <laughs> next, like, 10 years. <laughs> Dragon sort of figures out, like, he kind of, like, figures it out halfway through. He's like, what's this 17 year old kid doing at an investor's meeting? It's like, and he sees like the picture of like who Ron is like impersonating, and it like yeah. looks nothing like him. And yeah. then they're chasing him around the IKEA. And then the ending battle, I have it's something to do with Draken's um, amusement park. They have to stop the opening of Draken's amusement park. So what would Draken's amusement park do? I don't even know what. It would just be like a bunch of like weird like rides. There's like a, a mirror thing. There's like a laser gun oh, you thing. Oh, know be actually kind of cool. like actual okay, okay. lasers. Yeah. So you know what'd be kind of cool is if all the amusement rides were basically hidden weapons that would be yes. used to terrorize the city. That's okay, good. that's your idea? That, that's basically what I'm Okay, that's cool. And then we can play along with all the mirrors and, and shit. And so it's like, I mean, there has to be some sort of objective. They're trying to, like, shut down different things. But it's like, well, they got to find the control box, but they don't know which uh, yeah amusement place has the box. Right, so it's it's Ron and Kim, and maybe we And throw... then, of course, the end of the fight has to be, like, Kim Shigo one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, it has. And to. that it takes it takes place in like I don't know, it's like a hall of mirrors or something. Uh, uh, something, something. I, I, not a hall of mirrors. It's I don't too know. Overplayed. Uh, some even John Wick used it twice in the same fucking trilogy. That's the second episode of Pitch It. Kim Possible. Holy fuck. We haven't officially agreed because I will not concede Chigo yet. So let us know if you want Aubrey Plaza or Sylvia Hex, Hawks, whatever. Or if you have a write-in vote. If you have a write-in vote, too, tell us who you would like to see. I want Queen Latifah, Shigo. Fuck you. The next episode, coming out in March, we're going to be talking about our top five dream director-actor pairings. So Never like, been done before. That have never been done before. This episode was uh, kind of a doozy for us. <laughs> So we're going to give our creative juices a chance this to... This is the one thing that I care about all year, in terms of, <laughs> in terms of videos. Like, share, subscribe, all that fantastic shit. As far as other videos we got coming up, we probably have blind spots and after credits and shrink wrapped and a bunch of shit and the work and the pipeline. So y'all stick around for that, and we'll see y'all later. Oh, uh, are we actually doing, like, the call me, beat me, if you want to reach me thing? Is it, like, a fucking... No. We're not going to have a shitty, like, a Post Malone cover or something.